Well, we're waiting. All right, it's been a hot minute, but I'm back. Thank you all for being patient. Let's talk about this Venture Camp Season 1, the remake, 2023. God, that's a long title. So instead of going on to season three after finishing season two, Odd Nation decided to go back and remake season one with updated storylines and designs. If you guys don't remember my beta season one review, I'll leave it right here. This time we get 14 contestants instead of the 12 original, which means two brand new faces join the cast, which we'll get into. So unlike this Venture Camp season two, I'm not a voice actor this time around. What I'm mainly known for this season is being a writing assistant. I was in charge of taking the first draft finished by Jared and I touch up scenes and lines. Also quick shout out to our very hardworking proofreaders. I also want to shout out a cool podcast that a couple of the proofreaders started and it is gas. The voice acting this season is no secret a much bigger improvement over season two. I think it helped that season two grew the audience so when season one remake came around there was a lot of talented people who joined the cast. It also helps that many of the voice actors this season are my real life friends or people that I've met and recommended through other voiceover projects I've done. Shout out to Derek Jackman, Stephen Gordon, Rachel Glate, and Ken Coy. You all did not disappoint Point. And I also want to mention that they were very helpful when I started voice acting a few years prior, so I owe these peeps a lot. But it's not just them. Everyone in the cast is pretty great. I seriously can't think of a single bad apple in the bunch. Also the animation. Wow. You know, as a person who basically knows dick all about animation, it's still very apparent the insane changes that were made. I feel like this season could be shown on TV and people wouldn't bat an eye. From the shading improved to add suspense during fireplace eliminations, the scene transitions and establishing shots to give a clear scope of the locations, and smoother, more efficient running cycles, it's no contest. Honestly, between the voice acting and the animation improvements, it almost makes season two unwatchable. I feel bad for the folks who watched the season first and want to check Check out season two, which was made before all the improvements. And yeah, look, it was mind blowing for the time. Heck, it's still mind blowing now. It, it, Y'all standards are just way too high. You know, a traditional animated 22 minute episode costs around $300,000 to make. If we're talking how much a 13 episode season of Disventure Camp would cost, it would be 4 million easy. 4 million bucks, guys. But Odd Nation is very scrappy, as you can tell. They really make a little go a long way. Now that all the behind the scenes stuff is covered, let's look at the actual season. We're gonna do this the same way as last video, but with some key differences. First off, I'm not just gonna randomly pick characters to talk about. We're gonna do something better, going from worst character to best in my mind. That way it'll build up suspense and my retention for YouTube will be better, yay. I'll also try to comment more on challenges because I didn't do that last time. There are some great challenges here that need some appreciation. All right. Right, let's kick things off with 21st place. Worst character is Gret's mom. Okay, we don't see her in person, but she has speaking lines, so I'm counting it. She's just so oblivious that Gret wants praise, and it's honestly very grating. Number 20, Gabby's dad. Kind of the same reason as Gret's mom, but at least he had the smarts to hang up before I got too annoyed. Number 19, Franny. Inoffensive, but also didn't offer anything for Dan's character and brother, he needed it too. Number 18, Sean. A pretty stellar moment for Jake to share with his brother. Well, stellar in the story sense, I'm not a monster. I love the small bit of insight we get into Jake and Sean's relationship, best phone caller for sure. Number 17, finally we're getting into the actual characters. We have Jensen. He's big, he's hunky, he's Scottish? We're here! Everyone of Brothers and sisters are natural enemies, like Englishmen and Scots. We can't really say much more about him. It's insinuated he's a criminal, and we see Tom is investigating him, and the show is trying to pull a cat and mouse game between the two, but I never felt invested in this plot because it was never relevant enough. With that said, Jensen is inoffensive because while he doesn't offer much potential, he doesn't hurt the story by being there for the little bits he is. Number 16. Okay, this is where we have our first contestant. Who is the worst contestant this season? Ready for this? It's Dan. Just Dan. When it comes to Dan, I think he's got similar issues as Ali did last season, but not nearly as bad. The ratio of how important he is to the story and how long he stays is a bit off. If they'd cut this man three episodes earlier, I don't think he'd be this low on my list. I don't have the visceral hatred for Dan that I did for Ali though. There are a few things I do like about him. He's just so unproblematic and seems to just get clowned on by characters like Gabby, Tom, and Jake, people he originally had good relationships with, but throughout the season, through no fault of his own, he gets screwed over by some emotionally distraught yet more interesting characters. Dan is smart, but he does a great job at not shoving it down your throat, which I appreciate. We don't learn a thing about his background, but I did find him a bit endearing towards the end just because he really felt like just a chill guy, and it helped that he was absolutely screwed over in episode seven. Hey, in the beta season, he was like first boot, so he should take this seven episodes as a win. Number 15, Drew. 
Now, in the theme with this character, I will not be narrating this portion. Instead, why don't I give you guys something fun and make you read this portion? <laughs> All right, moving on. Number 14, Will. Now, Will is our first person to get booted this season, which is sad because in the beta, he got booted second, so there really was never a time where he got to shine. I will say, though, in this version, he gets a bit more to his character. I thought Will trying to overcome his fears of the wilderness was a pretty fun concept, especially when paired with Ashley's natural spunk and love for the nature. It gave them a decent start to their love story, but unfortunately, start is where it also ends. As soon as this is established, Will immediately gets booted after unfortunately unfortunately discovering Fiori's true intentions. Even more than Drew, I feel like Will was done even dirtier. Because unlike Drew, I do think there was room for Will to grow. And if I had it my way, he should have been the one to last seven episodes instead of Dan. As a result, he's gone too soon to rank that high, but I do like that him and Ashley get together. Just wish it was on screen. Number 13, Trevor. And here we come to our first of the duo hosts this season. Once again, instead of Crystal, we got new faces to grace our screens. And I gotta say, I really love Trevor and Derek. They kind of fix all the the issues I had with Crystal. Crystal takes a ton of screen time, Trevor and Derek do not. Crystal also doesn't have a ton of fun dynamics, while Derek and Trevor have some decent chemistry. And on top of all that, I just like having two hosts that argue. It's goofy, it's my cup of tea, what can I say? Now Trevor is lower than Derek just because I like Derek's shtick more. Maybe it's played out to some people, but I personally think Derek is the funnier of the two, even if he doesn't get nearly as much screen time. Trevor is great too though, he's got that personality of a great host, and he even has some great moments in later episodes. Number 12, Derek. We already covered Derek and why he's higher. Unlike season two, y'all may not see me hating on any characters because I genuinely like everyone to a degree, even Dan, but yeah. Derek's cool. He's definitely lacking in the screen presence though, so if he ever hosts again, I would like Trevor and Derek to be evened out in terms of screen time. Also for fans that ship them together, Y'all are insane. Number 11, Jake. Now, unlike season two, I'd say all the smarter characters end up getting further in the game. In season two, you had characters like Hunter, Ali, and Aiden who are pretty clueless through the entire game. But in this season, you don't see that except for Jake. Jake is kind of the village idiot and a punching bag for a lot of the season. I'm not sure exactly how I feel about him, but I can't say I hate him because Jake is pretty interesting. He has a lot of trauma, as you can clearly tell when he dumps it on everyone as much as possible. Maybe that's harsh, but he does get quite annoying. And I think that's fair to say. All this is purposeful, however, and Jake's been called out plenty of times for how he acts. And he does grow more mature through characters like Miriam, which is a great dynamic. Jake kind of peaked too early for me in episode 5 because of that dynamic, and as a result, he got worse and worse until his exit. But I don't want to ignore that he's a pretty well-written character. Plenty of people defend him and his actions, and I'm not saying you guys are wrong. I actually really like that because this discourse is exactly what makes Jake so interesting. But he's still not going to be very high on my list because he's just kind of annoying. Number 10, Ashley. Now I might get hate for this, but I think Ashley's a bit overrated. Whereas Jake gets plenty of hate for how he behaves, I feel like Ashley gets a lot of praise for not really doing too much. I like that she's competent in challenges and she sniffs out Fiori's BS along with Lil pretty early on. However, after Will gets booted, I kind of feel like Ashley was floating around until she had nothing left to do. In the beta, she was an early boot again, and I honestly feel like this remake didn't do her much favors in terms of plot lines. In the beta, at least we got to see Ashley and Fiori's bond a little more like big sis little sis type deal and it was heartbreaking when fury turned on ashley but we don't get that in the remake too much i think they should have leaned into this idea more especially since will going home could have been a great stepping stone to explore ashley and fury's relationship when ashley figures out fury is the reason for her potential love interest getting eliminated you've already got a perfect setup for a rivalry but i digress number nine nick here's the thing in the beta season nick made it all the way to the final four and he definitely didn't deserve it no relevance and he was basically a joke character so so in the remake, I actually like that Nick gets sent home much earlier. Nick is a funny character, potentially the funniest of the entire cast. And that's good because outside of his funny aesthetic, he doesn't really offer much. I think that's fine because Nick doesn't really feel like a character you can take seriously. I remember when I was writing him, I was concerned at the lack of likability he had for any of his actions. After all, he backstabs his own alliance in the second episode by voting out Will and behaves like an idiot, causing him, Lil, and Ashley to all lose. And I can't really defend him on that, but he's a very tongue-in-cheek stereotypical rich British asshole. And if you think of him in that light, he's pretty great. I don't think we'll ever see him again, but for what it's worth, I think Nick is pretty overlooked and pretty overhated. Number eight, 
Gret. Gret in the beta season was pretty standard reality show villainous. I like that this remake took her in a more sympathetic direction. She doesn't come off nearly as evil here, but just petty when she bullies Gabby and such. I did like her scenes where she was brutally honest with Gabby, those were pretty funny. If I had to give some scrutiny, I did not like Gret's boot episode, however. If you guys don't remember, episode 9 is the zombie episode, and in this one, we finally get closure on Gret feeling neglected by her parents, and all these complicated emotions are solved by Fiore just saying, No matter what you do, your parents will never love you. And then the challenge happens, it's a VR zombie challenge which is cool, they survive months and months in the game. I want you guys to think about that for a moment. These people have been in the game for months in their mind, and yet we only get bits and pieces of it. Gret grows to accept that her parents won't praise her in the VR game, but we never get to see any of that growth, and it just felt so sudden. I realized something. Being alone out here this last month has taught me that I don't need them. I never did. They were never there for me. That's the attitude! The little bits and pieces that we do see of them surviving the zombie game don't give any character development for Gret that leads to her saying this, so it all feels pretty forced. But Gret is still a solid character. She'd be way higher if her conclusion was a little better. Number 7, Lil. I guess this is my biggest hot take of the video, but I really like Lil. I know I gave Ashley crap for not having much to her character, and you can kinda say the same for Lil, but let me defend her. I love that she's the first confessional we see, and she's dedicated to helping her troop. It shows that she's good with kids, so her background actually plays a role in how she plays the game, which I can't really say the same for Ashley. Lil is also a leader who starts the alliance of her, Nick, Will, and Ashley. Obviously it goes to hell, but I don't blame Lil for any of that. She's a very rational thinker, and honestly I feel really bad that she didn't get more to do, because because she has all the bases for a really strong character. What's really sad is out of the entire cast, she's probably the most overlooked, and I can't stand for that. Lil, you'll always be number one in my heart. Well, number seven, but you understand. Number six, Tom. Tom's interesting. I remember in the beta, I didn't mention this in my video, but I really like Tom. He's definitely one of the more not realistic characters on the show. Having a spy as a contestant feels a little Tumblr fanfiction-y, especially with his mask and mysteriousness. It all felt like a recipe for disaster, but Tom's up this high for a reason. I really like that this season is very self-aware that Tom is a silly concept, but also takes it seriously when necessary. Tom takes a while to get good, but once the mask comes off, we get some solid background on him, and I gotta say, he really grew on me. I think it also helped that he wasn't the Gary Stu archetype that I assumed he'd be. While he's physically strong, sure, he's shown his weaknesses pretty clearly. His socializing is pretty much zero, as even Jake and Dan have more control conversations than he does, and he's also shown he's not very bright. It leads to some very funny moments, and he's definitely a fan fan favorite for a reason. Number 5, Fiore. I'm actually shocked in retrospect how high Fiore is on my list. I remember when I started watching, I really didn't care about her at all. In the beta, Fiore is about the same as she is in the remake. What I mean is, they don't really change too much about her other than making her slightly sassier and her relationship with Alec. I actually really dig the relationship with Alec and Fiore, but I definitely liked it less and less as the season went on, mostly because it didn't progress very much because Alec always would bend over backwards to do whatever Fiore wanted. It always felt like Fiore had too much power in the game, especially in the early episodes. She doesn't have a character arc through the season, but I think in this rare moment, Fiore works best as a one-note character. She really owns up to her scumbag nature, and there's really nothing I can say I hate about her. Number 4, Gabby. I remember in my beta season review, I mentioned that Gabby got out way too early. She was one of the better characters that were snubbed way too unceremoniously, and thank god they fixed that in the remake. Gabby got plenty of screen time to shine, and some people said a little too much, which I understand. Gabby is meant to be a little annoying and she won't shut up, sure. But her energy is infectious, she really brings a level of spice to each scene that she's in. Everyone else is so game focused or dealing with their trauma or relationship, while Gabby is just wrecking havoc and having a good time doing it. Similar to Fiore, but Gabby edges it out in terms of comedy. I'm glad we got her evil twin moments again, they really feel devoid of happiness in my heart. Number 3, Alec. Alright, our second not beta character. First off, Alec is a thirst trap, let's get that straight. The moment this man started talking, I could tell he was the character everyone would simp for. But in all seriousness, Alec was a very positive addition to the season. He had the benefit of having a close relationship with Fiore, who I guess is the main antagonist. You could say Gret or Ellie, but Alec and Fiore are there too. Come to think of it, there are a lot of villains this season, wow. In season 2, we only had Rhea and Yule. Anyways, Alec is kind of not in the spotlight for the majority of this season, choosing a more cerebral approach to the game. I was kind of taken aback though at how 
how much of a scumbag he turned out to be. What was saying he wished his son was more like Fiore? Like, damn. No doubt, Alec isn't a great person. So it really was satisfying when Fiore backstabbed him in the final four. I honestly can't think of much I would change about Alec. He just works super well and blends in with the cast nicely, which was a hard feat considering he wasn't in the beta. Anyways, that's why he's this high. Number two, Ellie. Okay, hold your horses. I'm not saying Ellie is in the right over Jake. I know what you bloodthirsty Jake fans are thinking, so let me start by saying I don't think Ellie or Jake are totally in the right. In the beta, Ellie and Jake's friendship slash feud was pretty one note. I mean, it worked, but I'm glad the remake took extra steps to add depth to each character. Now, why is Ellie so much higher than Jake then? When I was editing lines for Jake and Ellie, I realized that I loved their banter, mostly because both of them were not shy to point out each other's glaring issues, while still coming off negative in their own ways. Ellie pointing out how Jake is a sponge for drama, while Jake pointing out Ellie manipulates his trauma to get further in the game, these are both valid critiques. I actually saw a couple of videos made by some really smart fans. Go check them out. They're honestly a lot better at explaining than I am. Another thing I love about Ellie is her relationship with Gabby. In the beta season, Ellie and Gabby romantically was always teased, but the remake really gave us the full package, and to have them almost at the same level of popularity that Tom and Jake are really shows how impactful and lovable the two are. Gabby and Ellie both have flaws, but they bring out the best in each other, and I think that's the best type of on-screen relationship. To see how non-toxic these two are compared to Tom and Jake is a breath of fresh air. I think Ellie's a pretty flawed character, but there are definitely moments of goodness in her. For example, when she stands up for Gabby to stand up to Gret, it's a great moment to show Ellie isn't as bad as people keep saying. With that said, at the end of the day, I'm very glad she didn't win because this version of Ellie compared to the original was definitely too scummy. And she got what she deserved in the end, so the more deserving winner could rightfully claim her title. Oh yeah, speaking of which, number one, Miriam. That's right, Miriam is my number one favorite character in Disventure Camp. To be clear, as a writing assistant, I did not go out of my way to make sure Miriam won. That wasn't my doing. But even if I had that power, forcing your favorite character to win is never a good idea. But that's the beauty. Her journey to the win was so clean, she never received a single vote against her, and her development was slow building yet rewarding. I was so worried that Miriam would get sniped early on in the remake, which would have sucked since the beta really gave Miriam such great story material. But I'm glad that the remake honored it well. If I had to critique one issue I had with Miriam though, I know, shocker, my number one I still have issues with. But Miriam's win was a little underwhelming once Ellie was out. Compared to James's win in season Season 2, I felt like Miriam was kind of a standard good versus evil story where Miriam's growth as a character peaked before the finale. I don't know, maybe that's too nitpicky, but feel free to disagree in the comments. In fact, all my opinions are open to scrutiny because even though I helped write the seasons, my analysis is by no means the right one. Go down and tear me a new asshole in the comments below. Alright, that about wraps up the characters. Let me quickly comment on the challenges and we can get out of here. This video is already too long. Challenges this season are much more referential to the reality show Survivor. As a super fan, you can clearly tell all the awesome influences they had, and I honestly think the challenges that I enjoyed most were more survivor based. Episode 11's challenge was a pitch I wrote before I was even at the position of writer's assistant, so seeing that come to reality was really cool. Check out the season if you haven't already, and I'm giving this one an 8 out of 10. Okay, we're done. Sorry this took so long, but I hope it was worth it. Disventure Camp All Stars is in full swing. Let me know in the comments if you'd like more Disventure Camp videos. I would love to talk about All Stars, at least what I can. I enjoy making these videos so much and I appreciate every one of you guys for watching and I'll see you guys next time. Peace out.